Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome our honorable director, Professor Vinod Kumar Kanojia, and Professor Nagarajan Ramamurti, director, I am Amritsar. A huge round of applause for all of them. He's been joined by Dr. by uh, by Mr. Amit Thapar, CII Acro Woods Limited. A huge round of applause for him as well. He'll be starting shortly. Respected Chief Patron NIT Jalanda Sri Subhash Chandra Ralan, Honorable Director Professor Vinod Kumar Kanojia, Worthy Registrar Professor Ajay Bansal, Respected Sri SKRI Managing Director, Hero Cycles Limited, Mr. Amit Thapar, Chairman, CII Punjab, Mr. Ajay Sinha, Director, Steam House, Professor B.S. Sahai, Director, IIM Jammu, Professor Ramamurthy Nagarajan, Director, IIM Amritsar, Professor J.N. Chakraborty, Dean, Research and Consultancy, NIT Jalandhar, Dr. Sonia Chabla, Head Department of Humanities and Management and Chairman, BSRI 2022, Organizing Secretaries of the Conference, Dr. S.J.S. Bedi, Dr. Jagwinder Singh, Dr. Gyan Prakash, Dr. Sham Kiran Kaur, Dr. Sukhinder Kaur, and Dr. Ghosia. Respected deans, professors, faculty members, the experts from the industry and academia, and delegates of the National Conference. A very good morning to one and all present over here. I, Kritika Khanna, on behalf of Department of Humanities and Management, NIT Jalandhar, welcome you all at the inaugural ceremony of ICSSR-sponsored National Conference on Atmanirbhar Bharat, Building a Self-Reliant India, Prospects and Challenges Ahead. We are happy to have you all here at BSRI 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, over the next two days, this conference will will provide you with plenty of opportunities to share the prospects and challenges of different sectors of Indian economy and share knowledge and insights with primitive themes of the conference in respect of entrepreneurship, education, management, science and technology, healthcare, hospitality, and tourism. The Indian economy witnessed health and economic crisis during pandemic that had a catastrophic impact on all the sectors of economy. And today, walking on the road led by our Honorable Prime Minister, this national conference direct towards the resilient and self-reliant Bharat by pitching to discuss <clears throat> the strategic approaches to manage the critical economic sectors that will revive the country economically and will contribute to the healthy development of the society as well. We are glad to share that BSRI 2022 acknowledged over 100 participants from the various parts of the country. And this diversity today under this roof does not only aim for united India, but a self-sustaining, self-sufficient and self-reliant India. With that, ladies and gentlemen, before moving ahead, I would like to say that light and brightness has always been equated with positivity and virtuousness. To start this enlightened session, before moving further, I would like to request all the dignitaries on the dais and the <coughs> members of organizing committee to kindly please light the lamp. A huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome them to light the lamp and start this auspicious event and the morning.
Thank you, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen. This national conference will provide you with glorious opportunity to mix and mingle with your fellow delegates from all parts of the country. And on behalf of Department of Humanities and Management, I wish each of you a pleasant and fruitful stay of your time in NIT Jalandhar in the next coming two days. Gratitude is when memory is stored in the heart and not in mind. And today, we are honored to have the eminent scholars from industry and academia amongst us that has given us the opportunity to store the memory in the heart and not in the mind. Therefore, today, I request chairman and convener of this national conference, Dr. Sonia Chavla, and our worthy director to kindly please felicitate the gathering and the eminent scholars of the day. Mr. Amit Thapar, kindly please accept the token of gratitude from our side. A huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. S.K. Rai, <coughs> Director, Hero Cycles. Sir, it's an honor to have you here. A huge round of applause, audience. So kindly please accept this as a token of gratitude from our side. It is an honor to have you, sir, here. Yeah. Professor Nagarajan Ramamurthy. Director IIM Amritsar. Sir, accept the token of reverence from our side. A huge round of applause, audience. <laughs> Professor B.S. Ahai could not join us in person. So kindly please accept the token of gratitude from our side. On the behalf of BSRI 2022, it's a pleasure to have you, sir. The gathering is keen to fetch your insights in the forthcoming session. I also request, ma'am, to present the token of gratitude to our worthy director, sir. <laughs> Thank you, 
So, sorry to say that uh, because we are family member, so don't facilitate to our family member. Sorry. To welcome is to show honor. To welcome is to establish integrity. I request Dr. Sonia Chawla, Chairman and Convener, BSRA 2022, to deliver the welcome address and eliminate the August gathering about this ICSSR-sponsored national conference on Atmanirbhar Bharat, building a self-reliant India, prospects and challenges ahead. <clears throat> Respected Shri Subhash Chandra Vallanji, Chairman BOG, Worthy Professor Binod Kumar Kanojia, Director NIT Jalanda, Very Eminent Shri S.K. Rai, Managing Director Hero Cycles Limited, Mr. Amit Thapar, Chairman Confederation of Indian Industry Punjab, Revered Professor B.S. Sahai, Director Indian Institute of Management Jammu, Esteemed Professor R. Nagarajan, Director, Indian Institute of Management, Amritsar, Dean Research and Consultancy, Professor Jian Chakrabarti, Registrar, Professor Ajay Bansal, Organizing Secretaries of the Conference, Deans, Professors, Faculty Members, Experts from Industry and Academia, Delegates and Participants. A very good morning to all of you. It is a matter of honor for me to extend a warm welcome to you on behalf of Department of Humanities and Management, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, National Institute of Technology, Jalanda, at the inaugural ceremony of ICSSR sponsored National Conference on Atmanirbhar Bharat, Building a Self Reliant India, Prospects and Challenges ahead BSRI 2022. In fact, when we talk of the challenge, the word challenge reminds me of a quote by Roger Crawford, who says that being challenged in life is inevitable and being defeated is optional. And the challenge can be the outcome of anything, maybe the pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic-like situation or the geopolitical situation created by the conflict of the two nations leading to the food shortages and the disruptions in the supply chain all over the world. But in fact, our very survival depends upon our very survival depends on our ability to stay awake, to adjust, to adopt to new ideas, to remain vigilant and face the challenge of change as change comes with the abundance of opportunities also. And the Atam Nirbhar Bharat, a thought of the Atam Nirbhar Bharat, also reminds me of the Swadeshi movement, one of the India's most successful pre-independence movements. Being Atam Nirbhar is to be a globally competitive economy and getting more integrated with the global trends and making India for the world. Self-reliance in my view, is increasing our share in the global flows of merchandise, services, trade, finance, technology, and to be much bigger and more important part of the worldwide economy. Self-reliance does not advocate a self-centered system or a closed economy. In fact, trade has the ability to make the countries more resilient to the external shocks. And the fact that the Disruptions in one particular region at one particular point of time can be overcome by the world production network. However, when the shocks are global, when the shocks are of the global nature, the whole system becomes less resilient. And then there is a bit of trade-off between becoming more resilient to local shocks while being more vulnerable to global shocks, which can disrupt the whole network. Self-reliance is based on the pillars of rising economy, world-class infrastructure, technology-driven systems, vibrant demography, strength and demand and supply chain. 
and India is to better integrate and collaborate in the emerging areas to ensure sustainability as there are strong structural forces which can be leveraged to reach the goal of Atam Nirbhar Bharat. India boasts of the strong technical and engineering capabilities that are backed by top-notch educational institutions that work towards educating the youth of India. The government of India has also initiated the new education policy to meet the changing requirements of the quality education, innovation and research that further aims to make India knowledge superpower. With a large pool of highly educated and ambitious youngsters, India has the advantage in the growing number of startups and the independent enterprises promoting indigenous talent. With a population of 130 billion, India has a strong consumer market also. Similarly, the production linked incentive scheme introduced by the government focuses on enhancing India's manufacturing capabilities and enhancing its ports. And in fact, the current year's budget itself has a blueprint for developing a vibrant ecosystem for the research, design, and development of manufacturing within the country. And in fact, example of this is that the 70% of the defense budget has been kept for the domestic industry only. So India has an important role to play in contributing to the diversification of the global supply chain and making it more resilient. Dear friends, the conferences are the platform for the exchange of ideas with a number of brains sit together and put forward their viewpoint on a particular phenomena. And this conference has been planned to deliberate and understand the issues, prospects, and challenges for the Atam Nirbha Bharat and how we can collectively make our country more resilient. At the end, I'd like to thank our Honorable Director for, for his guidance and assistance that ensured smooth functioning of the event. I also express my sincere gratitude to Shri S K Rai, Managing Director, Hero Cycles Limited, Mr. Amit Thapa, Chairman CII, Professor B S Sahai, Director I am Jammu, Professor Nagarajan, Director I am Amritsar, for being part of the inaugural session. Gratitude to dignitaries from the industry and the faculty colleagues, deans who are here for attending the inaugural session. I am also. Thankful to the participants and the delegates who have come from different parts to join this conference and contribute their thoughts to the Atam Nirbhar Bharat. I wish you a very delightful learning experience while attending this conference. Have a bright and cheerful day. Thank you so much. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you, Dr. Chabla, for enlightening us. I, Kriti Mehta, extend a very sincere and warm welcome to all the one who is present over here and to our worthy guest of honor, Mr. Amit Thapar, Chairman of CII Punjab, Member of Punjab Entrepreneur Organization and President of at Ganga Agrivul Limited. Mr. Thapar did his Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial and Production Management and made his education workable in his professional world as well. He is a developer and innovator and a person with consistency. So a big round of applause for Mr. Thapar. It's an honor to have you here, sir. The audience is looking forward to hear your experience. Kindly address the audience. Uh, good morning to all, to all the dignitaries on the dais and off the dais. So it's my pleasure to be, you know, uh, addressing this conference, normally as a CIA chairman, you know, you get a lot of opportunities to speak on the topics of which you have no knowledge of. Uh, for example, just about 15 days back, I was called to speak on something about biotechnology, which obviously was not my forte. But this topic is close to my heart. And I can tell you that there are strong opinions, which I'll be sharing with you today. Eric Hoffler, an American philosopher in 1940s and 50s, once said, in these rapidly changing times, learners, that is the people who are willing to learn, will inherit the earth. And the learner who already know a lot will find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists. These are profound words. And with each passing decade, they are becoming more and more relevant. And remember, he said this at the fag end of Industrial Revolution 2. Today, 
we are in industrial revolution 4 so anybody who is ready to learn ready to change world is waiting duniya uski mutthi mein hai but people who say that we are already learnt hame bahut kuch aata hai unfortunately in 5 years in 10 years the pace is so much in probably in 2 years their knowledge is will remain just a knowledge it could not be practically applied see we we have just seen some we are still going through some unprecedented times covid is something which nobody saw which has which is which is touched every nation about 190 the world war affected about 40 45 countries covid was something which affected 195 nations every damn country in the world was affected when covid hit us in march we had no kits we had to import everything that is the that is the time when the word atam nirbharta and you know self reliancy or self dependency came into our mind that are we a nation who cannot even produce kits our industry lived up to that challenge they turned around in one month's time and rest is history so when we think of atam nirbhar atam nirbharta what does it actually mean what does it signify the english translation can be self reliant it can be self sufficient it can also be self dependent when i come across when i speak to people you know there is a lot of misunderstanding about this word people start thinking that import is a bad word we start confusing patriotism you know with atmanirbharta like ma'am said swadeshi movement now i have I, i already told you that i have strong opinions about this uh, topic you know when we start confusing and we start talk, talking about protectionism in 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 terms of atmanirbharta we start creating a folly we start going into the wrong direction please do not confuse patriotism with self reliance april's figure if i had share with you india's total export stood at 38 billion dollars which was the highest for any april since the country got independent the import was 58 billion dollars so we had a 20 billion dollar deficit we were celebrating the export everybody watched in india to export i'm i'm talking about the industry you know uh, we are at fault we want to export but we want to restrict import is that possible in today's global world it has to be a two way trade you cannot live in the world of protectionism when i talk about protectionism i personally am not in favor of protectionism especially in manufactured goods where we need self reliant reliancy or self sufficiency would be the areas of energy of technology in defense in food security any critical areas for the economy of the nation atmanirbharta self reliance self reliance is welcome but any non critical areas we should be buying the goods from wherever they are produced best and from wherever they are produced the cheapest i mean there are certain areas where we need to realize that we have our, we have our socks to pull up so let's not carry it away by import being a bad word let's not confuse it with protectionism just remember what 40 years of protectionism gave gave us from 1947 to 1991 probably 44 years it gave us a beautiful ambassador at a fiat car for which the waiting period was 4 to 5 years sometimes even 7 years the area where we really need to focus is because i am in an educational institution i'll share with you some very interesting data self reliancy and self dependency or self sufficiency in education is extremely critical in year 2021 india sent 7.7 lakh 770000 students abroad total money spent by indian parents on the education of the children outside india was 28 billion dollars 2.1 lakh crore rupees anybody knows our total education budget anybody it's about 1 lakh crore 
and for the higher education it's just about 40000 crores so indian parents are spending more than 2 lakh crore rupees per year on educating their children abroad and our total education budget of the country is just about 40000 crores when we think of this you know and we analyze this 70% of the students even if we think of people who are going to australia canada you know and you know other new zealand for immigration you you minus those those would be probably 20 or 30% of the total uh, uh, some total 70% actually go there for specialized education for specialized courses not for basic courses out of which us is our biggest market our focus for the past 70 years has been you know medicine and engineering i hope nep the new educational policy rectifies this flaw we missed on creating world class institutions and humanities when i when i i was talking with professor burner you know over breakfast arts humanities uh, economics environmental studies so many courses which are not available in india so many specialized courses for which students go abroad and spend this amount of money where is our atmanirbharta where is our self reliancy on this we need to create world class education institutions whether in private sector or whether in public sector to take care of this you know our former chief economic advi- uh, uh, sorry economic advisory uh, board created by prime minister mr bibek de broy was heading it he wrote a beautiful article in indian express about 5 6 years back 4 years back when a cook is paid more than an engineer well in develop, developed countries this is a fact for example in japan a good chef would earn better than an engineer probably i mean given the circumstances in india we are today the amount of engineers we are producing this would probably become true soon i mean a good chef would probably earn better in india than an engineer so we need to focus we need to have focus on creating world class atmanirbharta in education and we should not be shy away from admitting where we faltered in the past looking at the west their biggest import they don't shy away from importing anything they import human capital our entire talent our good talent is picked up by uk and us for money they would pick best of engineers best of doctors best of educationist by giving them better standard of living and better uh, uh, you know better salaries we need to think about it industry and academia need to come together it's extremely important to you know have this disconnect being addressed it is being addressed things are moving but still a lot has to be done our total research and development budget of our gdp is 0.4% even in the 1950s it, it used to be about 1% we have come down to 0.4% we are the only nation in top 20 research and developing countries where 65 to 70% of research is done by the government wherein in all developed countries or all developing countries including china we are, we are, which we are very fond of talking about uh, 80% of the research is done in educational institutes not by the government this is something or the government aided institutes so the research has to come to educational institutes and they have to partner with academia to make it a win win situation this is where industry also needs to pull up pull up its socks and we need to contribute more to research as ci as a as a as a body as an institution has partnered ci punjab has partnered with uh, iit roper so we will be you know uh, for you know forging this relationship with the uh, iit roper on a industry academia partnership few meetings have already gone up to create a win win situation so the bottom line is atmanirbharta is not a bad word let's not confuse it with protectionism let's focus for atmanirbharta on critical areas like energy like defense like food security and um, and above above all education so i i invite you all to be part of this atmanirbharta 
and do not not to confuse it with protectionism in the end i will end with a proverb old proverb i don't know who wrote it if you wish to go fast go alone if you wish to go far grow together so let's grow together and become truly self sufficient for knowledge for wisdom for technology and for the good of the whole country thank you a tycoon an industrialist and surely a stalwart some people wish to happen some people want something to happen but people like mr amithapur make it happen a huge round of applause for him ladies and gentlemen it is an honor to uh, it is an honor for us that we have mr ajay sinha director steam house with us and mr bernard from bergimgam from, from bergimgam for bergimgam city university so kindly please accept the token of gratitude from our side i request dr sonia chawla chairman bsra 2022 and our worthy director to kindly please felicitate the worthy members of the day and so kindly please accept the token of gratitude from our side i request dr jagwinder singh and dr s j sbedi to kindly please honor mr ajay sinha and mr bernard a huge round of applause ladies and gentlemen it is an honor to have you here sir thank you thank you so much everyone so it's a matter of immense pleasure for us to welcome mr sk rai sir has been the managing director at hero cycle limited having varied nation wide work experience of 40 years in the indian manufacturing industry with all the aspects related to mass production engineering at west bengal andhra pradesh up and punjab as well he is elected as the first and the only non family member on board closely associated with the hero group Mr Rai is a person who has inculcated a culture of training and retraining including TQM and quality circle we welcome you on panel sir kindly address the audience thank you kriti and very many thanks to dr chawla by the time they keep sitting this uh let me be very frank about it when dr chawla asked me to speak i i told her that i'm not very much used to this kind of an audience i address to the industries and a particular homogeneous class that but this is very very class the students are there teachers are there might be some industrialist also so i really don't know how much you will gather me but i wish you gather something from me so for that it is very important that let us make this session interactive i don't want rabbit i keep speaking here there and everywhere i don't want rabbit to khargosh ke kaan hai aur suniya ke sath khatam ho gaye so don't do that interrupt me disrupt me but please keep asking i'll confine to atm nirbharta by and large but there are certain things that i like to explain unless you understand why and where it is happening you will not be able to understand how to react against this okay amit is a very lucky to speak he tried to explain the difference between the protective 
एनवायरमेंट एंड आत्मनिर्भर बढ़ता है आई एम नॉट गोइंग ओवर देयर मैं इनवेस्ट करना पड़ेगा आप लोगों को ठीक है ओके व्हेन दिस पर्टिकुलर आईडिया ऑफ आत्मनिर्भरता के द यूक्रेन वॉर वाज नोवेयर ऑन द होराइजन नो नॉट एट ऑल नोबडी हैज इंक्लिंग बट व्हेन इट कम्स व्हाट आइटम गोस शॉर्ट वीट इमेजिन आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड पेट्रोलियम आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड निकल those who have any idea from 1200 rupees it has shot to 2500 rupees nickel cannot be argued here but wheat we have become now the united nations requests us that please help us with what so you there some kind of certain things where aatmanirbharta is very very important for the strategic well being of the, your country but at the same time there has to be a wide and broad aspect so when this particular idea of aatmanirbharta was designed there are basically five pillars to it one is that how to give impetus how to force the economy to grow faster then what is, you can see that it is happening in a way or so then was the issue of infrastructure punjab has infrastructure so don't think this is this is what infrastructure is there higher than this and many of the part in this country are very very deprived of their infrastructure so in infrastructure is one of the fastest catalyst to bring growth so that is where the importance is there and raising the demand unless you create a market we in the industry know very well unless we raise the demands what what is the sense of producing unless the consumption goes up so the third pillar and fourth is we will talk about in detail how technology leads to the growth and fifth part is democracy see they try to take sabka saath sabka vikas jiski baat hai log karte i have no political inkling but taking demography together is very critical part for any of the governance system so all these things were encapsulated and what is the part of that in what am i going to have that right now ask me now i'll use the friend but most of the time it is anyway very complicated the second sector which has come here where you list the bus this so a part of the and no has come up only on this and it may be very critical mark regarding the process and this is not i don't want to talk about that part of it but even that must be understood in services our contribution is so that's where the academy also comes
तो ऑटो कॉम्पोनेंट इंडस्ट्री या टू व्हीलर इंडस्ट्री फुल व्हीलर इंडस्ट्री इट्स बिकम वेरी वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट टुवर्ड्स वी विल बी मूव दिस इज सो सो ऑटो कॉम्पोनेंट क्लब विद ऑटो विल बी सब्सटेंशियल सब्सटेंशियल क्लस्टर वेयर इट इज बिग Change is happening in aviation. Chemicals. We can talk about this. Electronic system. The mobile that you see has been coming rather stop in the last few years. Coming into system. It is a great success, and this happens to be a great success. Electronic parts component, the product, the region. Food processing in this kind of that thirteen items is all. You need to understand that thirteen items. Medical devices, certain mining, pharmaceutical, renewable energy. Lots of things are happening. So PLI is something that is impinging upon your day-to-day -day life. Not something between the industry which is failing and the government which is failing. It's something that is going to change the shape of the world. PLI that way today is not very well understood. The only part we will bring it to be this house. The fact that. How we lay and how we are. Is it to count it out? It has to be forty to forty-nine percent of the input, and they can also be sixty to sixty-five percent of the input. So where does it? And so here you can always debate it. Where does academic? Comes into the accumulator. One, I don't want to say that discover the new product, but the process development of the same thing. You might just go ahead from that. What this is different? All the technologies are not new, but multiple institutions put together in the echo, and it has to be done. And lastly, equally critical is that industry. Should be able to openly accept what it can do, and it can be applied as a data structure. What we we are taking over for the future. It is also something. We had a conference from the Delhi one. We had a conference from the other. Large number of people are participating. Everybody has huge number of people. Unlimited and hydrated thing. I forget about it. We talked about. So those things are sorted, but a um, huge amount of potential of academic and, and industry operations. How it will happen? I'll, I'll come to. So I'll come almost to the end of this. My. The Indian media today does not speak the language that is not does not think in terms of what they are doing. I it is large now with the largest industrial community and the growth of industry and the growth of industry. Not too high for. And MSME in this country has a very low pocket, and I am not really on the same low level of education. Academia is sitting in this kind of part and talking about it. So first of all, the lingua that can go down the pocket, and believe me, we are in the seat of this now. We are not just here because of the fact that. Brought him here to be brought down. He was started. He was started. What did tell you? This is kind of one thing. And I think also very glad he he landed this morning. And so it's not only a sign. Let's see. No punishment in the class. Sure. I've been a sign only one year. Is to. Create 
sometimes the health center are used. No cost, no commercial interest. We have all the joint venture with the business, one of the largest companies, in the 30,000 people. We brought in the
and there will be great resource and the resource of your alumni and the grants for them. So now that is that we ask for them. It's still a little bit. We will go back to so all the feelings that they are available to can be present somewhere. Okay. And they are doing something which is not here. This is the value of it. Please, 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 the community should in fact be the design model. I should talk to the I tell you my own example. I'm from Google. Now to that. I agree with that. We have a Lumini Association which wants us to update every year for sure. In the survey. So somewhere, if you can look at people free pleasure in front. We are involved in the young mental health in hospital. What happened there? Something very funny. The doctors who are supposed to years or eight years or something doing well. And they have linkage and roots in Kanya or in Lunia. So when they are coming to here for three weeks, four weeks, they would like the MC to hold a can talk to them and ask for the doctor. And that's how this is transferred. So, mostly it is voluntary, but it is not happening in the No way. My own history. I'm not going to follow up for this information in the book for my life. The UK edition of the union graduates who have done well across the world, coming back here, have not been done. Possibly it is not the hardest thing. Somewhere the other has to be done, can be done. And the need of it. You can come many days. There is not one day that some years after the not the same thing. So you can do something like that. And you have to create a model here. Whatever all that has happened in manual. So many engineering colleges are looking at we have to be here. The leadership can be a big thing. The leadership, if there's anything that you can ask, I'm very sure nobody has much to ask. I understand that. My job was, was to inaugurate and whatever. My idea was to think of it. But the main inauguration was not my cup of the tea. I wanted to stimulate them for art and environment. How it is linked with the overall planning of this country. What academics can do, should do, and how academics is linked to the future of the state, where a chunk of the people are in the future. The chances are not discouraging any of you. Chances are very great in the Thank you for being Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for such an insightful information regarding industry and academia partnership. Before proceeding further, we welcome Mr. Anshul Huck, President Jalandhar Association, and Mr. Ashwini Kumar, Director Victor Forging. We welcome to both of you, sir. Now I request Dr. Chavla and Director NITJ to kindly come and give the token of reverence. I request Dr. Jagwinder Bethi, Dr. Jagwinder sir, kindly come.
Now, the another renowned personality that we have with us today is Professor B. S. Sahai, who is an educator, researcher, and transformational leader, setting high standard to create world class institutes with a global. Full outlook and a national focus. Currently, he is founder and director of I Am Jammu. Professor Sahai has over 37 years of experience in teaching, research, consultancy, and industry. I am delighted to share that he has served in various renowned institutions, including Queensland University of Technology, Australia. Sir, kindly enlighten the audience with your kind words. Uh, good morning to all of you. Can you hear me? My voice is audible. Yes, sir. I'm not getting any response. Whether my voice is audible? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. S. K. Rai, Mr. Amit Thapar, my friend uh, Nagraj. Professor Binod Kumar Kanozia, Dr. Sonia Chawla, Professor G. N. Chakravarti, all distinguished participants, delegates. Uh, first of all, I really feel sorry that I was supposed to be coming to your institute, Jalandhar, NIT Jalandhar, but due to some reason, I was not able to make it. but thank you very much for giving me this opportunity you know like this uh, the topic atm bharat or what we call self reliant india it is not merely a name it is a vision envisaged by our honorable prime minister and it will lead to creation of an ecosystem that will allow indian companies to be globally competitive and thus making india self reliant mr rai was rightly saying this thing that when it was announced on 12 may 2020 the pm gave a call to the nation giving a kick start to the atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan and announced the special package of rupees 20 lakh crores to fight covid-19 pandemic in india that time the package was almost equivalent to 10% of our gdp covid pandemic for last 2 years so it has really changed our life many things we learned very fast but the best part is this two years gave us an opportunity to check and recheck our capability our competence what was needed was just to muster the courage and that is what honorable prime minister has done all of us remember that personal protective kit ppe kit we are trying to import from china from other places and we have seen all drama and within no time india started manufacturing and the number was astonishingly very high it was something around 4.5 lakh pieces a day by july 2022 20 and that is the best example of atmanirbhar bharat that if there is a threat if you are not getting support from any corner of the world why not to do ourselves so it has given us an opportunity to introspect ourselves check our capability indians are very very capable and there is no doubt about it. in 3 months time india produced such a large number of pp kits think of medicine hydroxychloroquine supplied to 20 countries within no time 
vaccine. Initially, we had two vaccines, three vaccines. And finally, we were able to supply to about 100 countries all over the world. Our philosophy is that Vasudev Kutumbakam, Kutumbakam, the world is whole family. You know, uh, this uh, gentleman, Mr. Thapar, Ambit Thapar was talking very nice thing. He talked of that Atmanirvar never mean protectionism. No, it's never meant that. And Mr. Rai rightly said this thing, that if you need nickel to import, there is nothing wrong in that. But we should be self-sufficient in wheat. We have to be self-sufficient in energy, in defense, in food security, in education. And these are very much important. All of us know that mobile manufacturing as part of Atmanirvar Bharat. Now, India is one of the largest country to manufacture this mobile in the country. Same is defense. Who could have thought of that India will start exporting defense equipments to all over the world? And it has started now. It's the beginning. It's a very good beginning. Order worth more than 65, 70,000 crores are already there. Somebody was talking about uh, unicorns, uh, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship. That India is the third largest country to produce unicorns. Almost more than 100 unicorns are there in such a short span of time. But the question comes now that what are we doing here? What should be the role of academia? What should be the role of industry? How to bring entrepreneurship in the minds of our students? And that is really important. And that is what I feel is that I would like to spend some time. Let me just tell you this thing that uh, I am Jammu is the youngest I am, 20th I am among. And uh, we felt that if India has to grow, it has to be innovative and we must promote entrepreneurship. And we did this by introducing entrepreneurship as a compulsory subject in MBA program. We said it is a compulsory subject. Second thing, all speakers were talking about supply chain. We said the productivity of any country depends on how effective is your supply chain. And supply chain happened to be my research area. We said that supply chain must be a compulsory course. So that students should know about what is entrepreneurship, what is supply chain, irrespective of whether they are specializing in marketing, finance, or any HR or any such area. But they need to know about this uh, thing. I must tell you this thing that National Education Policy 2000 is a step towards Atmanirvar Bharat. Now the question is coming that how we can do that thing. Mr. Thapar gave a very good statistics that uh, India spends almost 2.1 lakh crores in sending students abroad or we are spending so much money. Is it possible to provide quality education in India? When we make our education system more competitive, because you know, it's in IAMS, some of the IAMS uh, students are getting the same salary, what students can expect salary at Harvard or any top business school in the world. So can we give quality education across all institutions? When we talk of management school, when we talk of engineering, when we talk of architecture, whether, whether we talk of medicine. And all of us were working in our compartment, silos, and we're very happy. I, I remember that when I was director of former uh, institute, I am Raipur, I was founding director there, and we signed an MOU with AIMS, and we, we were thinking to start, do something together. 
but we are not able to move forward because everybody was confined to their own thinking, own silos. This national education policy opened that Pandora box. That look, here is an opportunity. Grab as much as you want to grab it. And uh, with this, first thing first we did, and I would like to talk about that, okay, when we talk of Atmanirvar Bharat, let me just tell you one thing, that most of the time, all these institutions, whether it is IIM, IIT, NIT, or any such institutions, we try to collaborate with foreign institutions. We are very much enamored with that. We never thought of that, yes, we can collaborate up with our next door institution. Like say, I can collaborate with IIT, can collaborate with AIMS, try to devise new programs, which is contemporary, which nation needs. It is not that, okay, somebody is doing, that's why we should be doing, no. And that's why what we did is, let me just tell you, that we introduced probably the first experiment in India. We introduced dual degree program with IIT Jammu. The do BIT, uh, BTEC from IIT Jammu and MBA from IIM Jammu. And we're surprised to see the res resp response of this program. Honorable Andre, uh, Home Minister and Education Minister, both of them were here in Jammu at IIT Jammu when we were launching uh, this program. And they launched this program. And uh, we feel that, that probably it will bridge the gap between what we offer in BTEC course or what we offer in MBA course. Similarly, you will feel happy. To, uh, let me just tell you one thing, that we introduce new course, which is starting from this year, uh, from academic season 2022-23. That is MBA in hospital administration and healthcare management. And this thing came when we saw during COVID time that we had resources. Of course, there were some demand, artificially created demands and some dissonance some in some pockets. But the fact is that we realized that we had the resources, but probably we are not able to manage it properly. And management was missing in the whole process. The supply chain was missing in the whole process. And that's why what we did is, that with AIMS Jammu, All in Institute of Medical Science Jammu, and IIT Jammu, we started this program, MBA in Hospital Administration and Healthcare Management. And you see that uh, IIM is going to talk about management part of it, AIMS is going to talk about healthcare part of it, and technology is going to be taught by IIT. And this part is that it is, uh, you know, it is uh, at an affordable price. The same course, if somebody is going abroad, it becomes very, very expensive. So I think is that this is the time when all institutions should be thinking in terms of collaboration and is very much important. And if you really want to raise the bar of education in the country, probably all institutions of national importance should be collaborating and hand-holding some of the institutions in and around their vicinity so that the quality of education must be raised. You know, like the, there are many surveys done and uh, they say that only 15% students are employable or 20% students are employable or not like to get into that thing. I would like to know, uh, I would like to say this thing that what more we should be doing so that they are employable. How come students of IIT, IIMs, AIMS, NIT, all these places, students get placed, very good placements they get, but other places they find it difficult. It is just because of quality of education. So if you really want to be self-reliant, this is the area where we should be collaborating. And it is not just collaborating for academics, but I think that collaborating for research also. Somebody was talking about that we are spending just 0.4% of GDP on research. And 60% of research is coming out of, is done by the government. Let me tell you that it is not the job of government, it is the job of university. 
it is the job of institutions to do research and should be done meaningful research why can't there could be sabbatical from in the relationship between industry and academia i know that there are great minds in industry there are great minds in defense bureaucracy police all walks of life there are great minds i have many friends in industry and we keep talking that why can't we have a sabbatical of professors who are preaching in academy this this iit i am sorry any university for that matter should go for a year to industry and industry people should be coming to academia it is very much doable and unless we do this thing you know there will always be a gap because you are the recruiter you should know and you have the right to know that what type of out product you want to have in your company so i think that and moreover if you are not coming to academia you are doing so uh, we must uh, encourage people from all walks of life and particularly from industry let them do phd let them do research because that is the requirement that okay if you want to come to academics and abroad everywhere it is done many of the theories are evolved from the industry so i think that this uh, research is very much important industry should trust academia and academia should trust industry and they must collaborate not only for placement and summer internship that is a done thing that is known we have to move beyond that and i feel is feel it's really important suppose if our professor is going to any of the industry to do spend one year time let me tell you once he is back to the in academia he will be a much better professor because he will be able to correlate theory with the practice he will be able to understand the problem of industry he will be able to understand what are the research potentials in industry similarly when people from industry coming to academia they will be able to appreciate that what academia is doing you know this uh, for last 30 Uh, 5 40 years i am listening this academia industry partnership probably we have to pin down somewhere that what exactly we are looking for and what we want to do from this partnership what we want to do this uh, uh, this and i think that uh, it's not only question of uh, summer placement final placements like that is starting from admission course curricula whatever course structure is required whether our course is contemporary with any of the best university in the world so all these things are very much important and this leads to balance uh, the future of education with future of work because uh, in like say we have to update ourselves i keep talking to my colleagues in aims uh, director of aims or and uh, you know like say they are they are using technology in a big way big way so the future of work lies in artificial intelligence or whether you talk of automation and the gig workforce so in such a scenario it is inevitable for industry to rely on academia to access and train the kind of talent that is required to thrive in the future workplace to ensure lifelong learning next point i would like to talk about this thing that somebody was have already touched but i think it's really important that uh, leveraging alumni network it's really very much important let me tell you like say i am alumni of iit delhi uh, i'm alumni of uh, bit bit sindri and we keep getting lot of mails almost every day we get keep getting mails that we are doing this we are doing this how you can support iit similarly we must try to leverage alumni irrespective of whether which or institution we are talking of all of them are at a responsible position and they will be of great asset to the institute and they will be a great help to the institute so i think is that we must try to learn this thing and if we are able to this this will really help in increasing the employability this will really help in increasing our productivity this will help in making us more cost competitive 
quality oriented so i think is that this uh, atmanirbhar nirbhar bharat is something which uh, brings lo- should bring laurel to the nation what uh, prime minister is asking that okay come to india manufacture here and export basically we have to go in deep into it it's not just simply that okay come and produce and go it's not like that basically we want to regain our glory that we want to regain our past glory that india was jisko hum kehte hain sone ki chidiyan thi usko hame fir banana hai aur usko banane ke liye jo hai aatmanirbharta bahut zaruri hai aatmanirbharta ke liye jo bhi hame karna pade aur uske liye we have talent we have everything with us the only thing is that we have to probably put everything together so that we become self reliant it is uh, required and i'm sure that collectively we can probably change the whole face of india it's a great country and we have to make it further great thank you very much it's a pleasure talking to all of you and giving me this opportunity thank you thank you sir for enlightening us as you said self reliance and atmanirbhar bharat are not mere words but a vision seen by our prime minister and is possible only by the contribution of 138 crore indians as a single person cannot change everything i repeat single person cannot change everything but everyone can change something so with this our next keynote speaker received the university research and scholarly excellence award in 2008 the distinguished service award in 2009 and best reviewer award for european management review awarded by the european academy of management he has lectured at iim ahmedabad university of applied science in austria burgas free university and university of national and world economy bulgaria recipient of a second first prize grant to teach research at the university of applied science in valmedia latvia served as the founding chair of the management and marketing department of university of houston victoria school of business member of the president's cabinet member of the academia council university grievance committee and policy review committee ladies and gentlemen i'm talking about no other than professor nagarajan ramamurthy director iim amritsar a huge round of applause for him He received his PhD degree in business and management from Robert H Smith School of Business University of Maryland. Taught a variety of courses in the management discipline at both undergraduate and graduate level. Published his research in leading journals and has presented his research at several national and international conferences. Served on several scholarly editorial boards and above all an ingenious, spirited and a person of letters with an undying spirit to learn. A huge round of applause again for Professor Nagarajan Ramamurthy. I request you, sir, to kindly address the gathering with your wisdom and learnedness. Uh, good morning and greetings, uh, Dr. Subhash and Ravan, Chief Guest of Sri S K Rai, Guest of Honor Sri Amit Thapar, and Professor Sahai, uh, my friend. Just I saw you a month ago. Uh, Professor Kanojia, Professor Chakraborty, uh, Dr. Sonia Chawla, and all the dignitaries, dignitaries uh, who are present here. It is actually my pleasure to be invited to be a keynote speaker. in this uh, conference uh, where the theme is atmanirbhar bharat before i go into that let me share a couple of stories uh, to start with i was working in the industry for nearly 10 11 years before i decided to go to the us to pursue my phd so when i it was a different uh, experience for me you know here you deal with the uh, labor relations and employee complaints and grievances court cases uh, or whether you have sent your uh, uh, it's also handling administration whether the products have gone out from your warehouse and so on and so forth and there uh, 
all of us if you are a student and then not necessarily studying about the theory or principles but you're really studying about research articles and whatnot i couldn't digest it because i felt that there was a big disconnect between what i was doing here and what actually i was studying in doing my phd program in fact a couple of times i even upset my uh, professors you know when i questioned them about the relevance of what they were doing right to the industry i mean i could visibly see that they were upset and they were, i mean they didn't like the way i criticized it okay. probably you would have felt the same thing nevertheless uh, <clears throat> this was the first one you know, the beginning of my phd uh, after taking so many doctoral seminars and all that, when I was close to competing, it was about 27 years ago, uh, I had submitted my thesis to the thesis evaluation committee. And I fixed up a date for defense. Okay, I mean, that the difference is that, you know, you decide the date when you're ready to defend. It's only talking to the various committee members. There was no Google sheet to float, or float and find out, you know, what dates are convenient to you. The only thing is you take a piece of sheet with you and then actually ask each professor when they are available and whatnot. I had done that. And then this was just a week before uh, my thesis. One of my committee members, a PhD from Columbia University was, uh, uh, I saw him in the uh, washroom. As a new as a PhD, I was very nervous, nervous in the sense that, you know, I have to go and defend my dissertation, what questions they will ask me and how am I going to answer that? Or will they fail me? Or is it time that, you know, there's something rectification to be done? Should I do it now? So here, uh, Professor Gannon was sitting there, uh, you know, using uh, the washroom, in the sink next to me. I asked him, I said, like, Marty, like, uh, did you read the dissertation I gave you? You know, he said, no, I've not read it. You know, I will read it. Okay, it's still a week away. Then he asked me, just tell me one thing that, you know, what is the practical use of your dissertation to um, what problem are you trying to solve in the business field? Okay. Of course, uh, I'm very, uh, um, what do you call, um, what I say, a like, little bit aggressive or assertive too. Depending on, so I said, Marty, can I ask you one uh, question in return? He said, you know, sure, you ask me. He said, like, you, know, you did your dissertation and you have been supervising so many dissertations so far in the past 30 years of your career. Can you tell me one dissertation where, like, you know, there was a practical uh, significance to it? Okay. Then he said, that's a very good answer. So I said, that's good. You know, now let's move on. So I went and deferred the dis dissertation and then um the real thing is now after 30 years when i do interact with the industry i see that you know what i did right what type of issues that the that are there in the industry and how what i did 30 years or 28 years ago or what i started building on it actually has had can answer some of the industry questions one thing is, you know, we have the myopic view at some point of time, either from the industry or from the academia, that, you know, this is what the world is, you know, that this is what the world looks like from where I am. Okay. I mean, I don't know how many of you uh, are fans of astrology, that uh, you have the Indian system of uh, Vedic astrology and you have the Western system of uh, this one. Can someone tell me what is the difference? Quickly. Yes. No, that is the one thing, okay? The planners are the same, right? You are going to the details. The basic difference is like, you know, I think the West, I mean, the in Indian astrology, Vedic astrology, like, you know, we, uh, I believe, okay, I may be wrong, which one is what? One is like, you know, we see the, the way we see the planet from Earth, okay? From here, you see where the planets are. So that is one system. Whereas the Western system, or the Eastern, I don't know which one, I still have to go back. That one actually looks at like how Earth is seen from the outer planets. Okay. So that is why, for in spite of the fact that you, know, you have all these 12 uh, science and all that, you know, those are common, but the basic difference is like, you know, how the, um, we view the planetary system or universe, right? Whether you view it from the point of view of Earth or 
you know, the view from the other side, okay? So in the same way, there is uh, still this myopic view. Okay? I think one of the things Professor Sahai mentioned and others mentioned about these unicorns and entrepreneurs and all that. So I told you as a student what I responded to a professor. Now let me tell you what I responded to a student as the professor. Okay? So this student in my class, he failed the class subject, you know, in Maryland. He did not graduate. Uh, but of course, you know that in the, uh, here, like, you know, we give the marks only, then we give the degree. So there we give the paper degree, you know, when people, when they graduate on the day, it is just a picture of the university or whatever it is rolled in. But the actual de degree or marks or diplomas are grant, I mean, given after nearly a month, you know, when the grades are finally out. So it could also mean that a student can walk through this uh, convocation ceremony and get uh, the degree with his family, friends, all those people watching it. But the, actually, the student may not have graduated. So <clears throat> this student got a job in one of the uh, big financial services companies and left. And nearly after a year, he calls me up, you know, I had left the university, I had gone elsewhere. He calls me up to say that, um, um, you know, I failed your class, you know, I want to know why. So I said, you failed your class because you did not complete all the assignments. You know, I said, what do I owe you now? And uh, I will give it to you now, the cases, whatever it is. I said, no, that's too late, my friend. Uh, it's nearly a year. I'm not going to do that. Obviously, the university registrar has turned him to me that only the professor can change the grade and so on and so forth. So, in the, to cut the story short, I said, no, I'm not, I won't do it. Repeat the course, okay? And uh, he said, you know, I've been working for this uh, Prudential for the past one year. I know more about business, you know, than what I learned in the school. So, I turned around. I said, I know my friend, like, you know, there are millions of entrepreneurs around the world who do not even know how to write or, you know, uh, sign their signature, but they are millionaires, okay? So there are millions of such people around the world. So if they want to give you, the university wants to give an honorary degree to you, I won't stop it. But degree by credit and degree by exam, you fail. So go ahead and do it. The why I'm saying is that sometimes, like, you know, that when I reflect back on these experiences, I see that, you know, like, where are we, how are we connecting these various dots, right, about academia, industry, education, or what the goals are. Uh, I know industry is only one. And many times students ask you, like, why should I take multiple regression, right, in the MBA program? What am I going to get out of it? I never used it in the company, which we know. Okay. Or why should I, you know, my major is philosophy or psychology, you know, why should I really take some you know, course in uh, physics? Okay. They ask all these type of questions. You know, the thing is, uh, again, as an educational uh, educationist myself, uh, myself and as an educational institution, what we are really getting people ready for is not for one particular uh, field or one particular thing, you know, like it gives them the various opportunities that they can really uh, pursue. Okay. So having started that, let me tell you the few more things I had in mind, which I thought I'd share you, but this was not my original idea, but I had something then I said, as I was listening to various people, I said, okay, these are interesting things that I will share with the audience. Um, when we talk about the self-reliance or Atmanirbhar, self-sufficiency, whatever you call it, I think the previous uh, speakers have articulated that very well, so I'm not going to repeat. Uh, what they have said, but I do have some other um, ideas or uh, 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 something to share with you. I think anything that we have to uh, we study or we look at it, it must be studied in the context. Context makes a difference. You know, in other words, like, you know, why is it um relevant or important in the current global context? And also, like, you know, taking a little futuristic view, uh, what are the new world order that might emerge, right, in the next few years? Okay. I mean, we have seen great uh, powers, great empires, you know, ruling the world, and then now they've gone back, and then some new player has emerged. So 
this the in this cyclical thing what type of new word or word order will emerge we don't know at this time but you know there are trends for example we can uh, speculate and it may work may not work and what are the challenges that we as an academy as are likely to face and also the industry industries that are likely to face you know in the implementation of this atmanir or even the basic question that you know, should we be pursuing atmanir in every aspect or you know where do we draw the line and um, how can academic research contribute to this whole process um, of uh, going to, towards the self reliant self reliant uh, india right um, if you ask donald trump you know he was talking about make america america great again that was his uh, thing so you do see some sort of uh, commonalities right arising out of the various uh, leaders around the world and finally like you know that how can industry academia foster um, this type of collaboration if you really look at today i think we are much relying on a much more uh, interdependent world intertwined world you know between social economic uh, uh, situation it's not uh, i think we talked about covid and all those things but the fact is that you know like uh, today if you are wearing a shirt or something other you don't know like you know where, how it was stretched who stretched it where it was uh, the yarn was made and so on and so forth this is not just about uh, the product you know even the services that we get meaning that you know you can look at you know there are call centers call centers in india which are catering to people in uk or us or the rest canada or some other uh, client tax returns for the americans and british are being done in in india by cps or cas here right so this is one is the interdependent world but then we have also had the shocks i think from the past 3 years we had the couple of shocks you know i mean shocks will keep coming you know it may be like you know today we talk about we had covid and then uh, the ukraine war which no one anticipated we thought like you know we are just coming out of it and then there are more and serious more serious blunders i don't want to get into the political uh, aspect of it as to who is right or who is wrong but the fact reminds that uh, more and more blunders are being made mostly for egoistic reasons by various leaders around the world uh, and uh, the net result is that you know it also has opened up one challenge for most of us that is any country now we will see that if you have if, if let's say if i have a dispute with my neighbor right our uh, this one and somebody can say i'm going to stop uh, supplying you these things i'm going to stop doing this for you right uh, supplying food or exporting food or uh, technology name it or we kick you out of the monetary system right why i'm saying is that you know this is a lesson that i almost every country has to learn okay is that in the interdependent world right intertwined world there is very good chance that somebody can arm twist you okay and uh, you know in that process you know the arm twisting does it work or not and where does it really end i think this is a unfortunately sad situation that we are dealing with okay uh, today uh, what it means that you know somebody may be a friend and what not and next day you become an enemy then you say like these are the consequences for your action or you look at what president biden did in uh, taiwan that you know like we'll come to the you know clearly antagonizing the chinese you know deviating the long term policy or whatever it is i think do you think that chinese are going to forget forgive this or forget so in a political situ i think in a, we are living in a much more volatile and dynamic political uh, global world okay let me not make the mistake of conveying that you know this is only a volatile one but actually like after the wto was uh, signed in 2001 and most of the countries every country has prospered uh, uk has prospered india has prospered china has prospered though it's no question is not that prosperity has taken place i think the prosperity across the world right in the past 20 years has been much greater and that's the one that really created this type of interdependent uh, uh, nature of work okay um, but the thing is like you know it is also the what we are learning today is that this can also be upset right in no time right because of 
some political ideological differences or whatever you want to call it or even economic differences okay in fact i feared uh, for world war 3 a nuclear attack when trump was in uh, in the office you know the, i said like you know when is this lunatic guy going to do something you know but now it looks like you know somebody else okay anyhow the question is like just because you know we are having this type of uh, interdependent world and in the short time i process how i mentioned how india has uh, in the covid not just stress but the rest of the world and what not which is true but uh, can we uh, i think um, mr uh, topper mentioned like you know does patriotism equal uh, up nirvan right and what not the real issue that I'm going to frame is that, like, you know, these, uh, can we isolate ourselves from the rest of the world under the uh, Atman Nirmar Bharat? Or for that matter, can any country isolate itself and then say that, you know, make in uh, India or make in UK or make in uh, Russia or make in US, will it work? Should we abandon the interdependence and really go towards that? Or to what extent uh, we define the boundaries you know, where we want to be self reliant? I think the, this was also mentioned core sectors like energy and whatnot. You know, we need to be self-reliant, and there are sectors where uh, you know we can be okay. If I don't get a, a shirt uh, from US or somewhere, Van Houston, that's okay. I can live without it. I can buy something local. But you know, can we really do something else like you know where it is much more critical? You know, that will uh, upset or threaten the national interest of the society. So one challenge that we will face is that in terms of Atmanirbhar Bharat, like, you know, how do we um, maintain the interdependence, like be a good global citizen at the same time, like, you know, also be on self-reliant. In that process, we also cannot abandon certain international norms and also like international codes that come up with. There are several global issues that we are facing. You know, some issues, for example, might be unique, right? Only to India or only to US or only to UK, but there also you have issues that are fairly global, for example, like sustainable development goals, uh, the issues of climate change, right? These are not something that are only, uh, in fact, yesterday I was reading that, you know, because of the climate change and, you know, global warming, that um, the South Asian, uh, countries like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, like we are much more likely to see a huge temperature rise in the future than the rest of the world. So these are somewhat like, you know, some are endowed to, because of our geographical location and some are sort of inherited by us. Okay. Some are culturally written. So some problems like another major issue is like access and inequalities that exist. Okay, it's also a universal issue, you know, in spite of the fact, as I mentioned, that, you know, between 20, 2001 to 2021, in 22 decades of, uh, after the WTO was formed, you know, the global prosperity has gone up, but the effect of the global prosperity has not impacted or benefited all the countries around the world equally. There are some winners where are there, and there are quite a few losers, like, you know, that is where the issue really comes, that, you know, why should we... Um, uh, be part of this process okay. and please don't think that you know this uh, type of issue is only uh, in developing countries or underdeveloped countries you know there are a lot of people like even in developed countries like who oppose wto and that's lopsided because they think that jobs in the us or jobs in the uk are being outsourced to india and indonesia like you know why should that happen right there is one point of view from that side and you also have issues that are uh, created internally within, even within uh, uh, India, for example, like you know, two, three hundred, like middle class, uh, class, you know, it has become bigger, larger, right? There are a lot more companies, uh, unicorns and MSMEs have started in the past couple, couple of decades. There is no doubt about that. You know, despite the fact that there are problems, you know, whether we manufacture here or we just assemble, if that's a separate uh, industry specific uh, issue. But the reality is that, you know, the business opportunities, opportunities for growth have, have shown right in this country. In China, it has happened. China has prospered. India has prospered. And you also have so many African countries that have not prospered as much as they should have. Okay. 
some of the South American countries have not prospered as much as they should have. So it is not only occur between countries, but we also have this type of issue within a country because even within a country like India, the effect of this interdependent, you know, the prosperity has not been distributed uh, equally. Okay. Some have benefited more than others. I think that is where the sour feeling comes. So this inequality and in access is something like, you know, that uh, it's again a global problem. Okay. Um, U.S. also that is true. I mean, data shows that uh, one percent of the U.S. population, like, you know, their wealth and everything dramatically increased. But, you know, the standard of living or purchasing power parity, like for the, about 98 percent of the population has remained stagnant in the U.S. And now we are dealing with this high inflation because of Ukraine war and all sorts of things. So there are many challenges, I, I would say, that are universal in nature, right, where Atman Nirbar, Bharat or any uh, country, this one can also not or should not can also, but should also not only look at how we be self-reliant and how we can also help solve the problems for the rest of the world, right? That's also something we must actually uh, keep in mind. And then the question of social objectives, I think that is uh, because of the inequality, climate change, whatever it is, then every nation, including India, we have certain social objectives. I think Professor Sahai mentioned about education, right? How you um, and earlier it was uh, mentioned that, you know, how much, how many billions are being spent by people in India to send their children abroad, right? It is quite possible that, you know, we can, um, in, if we can improve the quality of the education internally, like, you know, these people will not really go okay? and it is uh, go abroad. Okay? So this can, these aspects also can actually help reduce that uh, inequity, inequ inequ unequal access or inequities, the thing. But uh, again, another question that, that all of you should really think about is that what is the model that we have to follow? Okay. I mean, many times we have the tendency to believe that uh, a model that works in UK or a model that works in Germany or a model that works in Europe, right, uh, or USA is going to work here. Uh, unfortunately, like, you know, that is not the case. I mean, I can tell you that all the ladies here will be having here, like, you know, we get maternity benefit leave of six months. And uh, many of the European countries, like, you know, they give a maternity benefit for three years with graded salary, like 100% for the first year, 80% or so for second and 75%. I don't know what UK does it. I think UK is more like India, 26 weeks of it, something like that. But uh, people always ask this question, you know, why are they getting three years of paid leave and why are we not? Why are we not getting? The difference is you know, that they have a social problem of negative growth rate, birth rate. So the population is dwindling in order to help them, um, the people like, you know, to maintain the population to grow, they are doing it. And here we don't have that problem. We have a different problem of population explosion. So now we are dealing with, you know, how do we keep our population growth under control? Okay. So the bottom line is that, you know, never, let's not make a mistake that, you know, if we have to follow this Atman or Bharat, we have to follow some other model because each uh, system is completely different. The free market economy in the U.S. versus the socialist uh, free market of mainland Europe versus uh, the purely communist uh, one like China, right? They're all different, but they're all there to solve the different problems uh, that are unique to them. So as uh, researchers, as academics, you know, what you really need to focus on is to see uh, how does your research or how does your, uh, this one tries to solve the issues that are fairly unique or idiosyncratic to the uh, Indian system, as opposed to trying to say that I'm trying to really look at, you know, what's happening in the U.S., you know, and whatnot. Another example I can give you, like, you know, here, for example, we have, uh, uh, we focus on uh, to address the social inequities um, in the society, stratification, whatever we want to call it. We have followed an affirmative action where we focus on the outcome. Have you reached the outcome as opposed to the process? 
You know, on the other hand, if you look at UK or European model or the US model, affirmative action is not uh, focused on the outcome per se, but it is focused on the equal opportunities for everyone. In fact, I was talking to um, my chairman of the board is an um, media person. He knows all the PM's office and prime ministers and ministers. So during our convocation on the April 2nd, we were having this discussion about this, uh, how the policies, you know, like uh, are changed. Then the contrasting example was, you know, how I was just telling him that, you know, during my days of MBA, we used to read this, there was no internet. You know, we just have to read this weekly business week or whatever it is for feature article to learn, you know, what went on in the business in that previous week or economic times and all that newspapers was the only uh, source of information. So I think, you know, there we found how, for example, excise duty uh, would uh, increase or decrease or import duty would increase or decrease depending on whose shipment, right, comes to the ports in India, right, if it is someone uh, close to the ruling party, like, you know, the taxes will come down on the next day or next, uh, after two days, when my competitor's product comes, you know, the excise import duty will go up, you know, all through a circular. So he was telling me that, you know, like, you know, Modi has made it very clear that uh, if you want to change the rules, change the rules, but change the rules for everyone, you know, don't do it only for one person. Okay. So why the reason I mentioned that, you know, this, these type of problems, again, if we have to solve it, okay, this is something that you can, uh, a good uh, topic for you to study and make policy recommendations, you know, in terms of. Uh, what type of policy changes or rules are actually going to benefit, right? Uh, or make this Atman Nirbhar uh, work. The next thing is, what is the nature of research that, you know, we do, right? <clears throat> One of the, I mean, as I started the PhD program again, when I go back, you know, what really helped me was that it's not just about the uh, linear models of uh, testing and those type of things that really help. But again, like, you know, the broader philosophical question of how do you choose a topic, right? I mean, personally, I say there's no such thing as a good research or bad research, right? Any research is a research, right? It advances our knowledge, but some, for example, are more focused on a, this one. So there they said, you know, like if you get uh, good research ideas or research topics, you know, something you can solve for the society or solve for the world comes from media or reading non-academic articles. Okay. Which was a surprise to me because you and I would think that, you know, the newspaper articles are all not scientifically, there's no peer review process, you know, there is no rigorous uh, experimental design or something like that, you know, these really happen, natural phenomenon that happen in the um, industry or in the society. And why do you choose a topic from that? Because, you know, do you really take it? Then my uh, advisors and others said, no, the reason why is that when you read an article, for example, like let's say, um, what happened with Enron, right? You know, when Enron uh, scandal surfaced, you know, then so many people started doing that, you know, how did this happen? All these financial derivatives and all that, you know, the entire field of finance and economy, they started going after studying that phenomenon as to how it happens. So as academics, you know, like you can choose topics that are really relevant, right, to the uh, society or the policy makers, um, rather than moving completely basic research, which is also required, I'm not saying no, you know, move, move more towards an applied research, uh, which is uh, more interdisciplinary in nature. For example, like, you know, I talked about inequalities and access. I think that is also one of the things in the NEP 2020, you know, access to education for everyone. Now, if we really look at, you know, this inequal inequalities or access to education or inequities, for example, Different people can study. Psychologists, for example, study about the psychological effect it has on people, right, due to inequities and whatnot. Uh, sociologists, for example, like study that, you know, why only certain uh, groups or certain sects, right, are uh, 
there are let's say tribal areas we are finding it difficult to bring them even though government says educate them right so then we can you can study like you know why these people don't want to come and study or what is happening right now there is something you can really look at uh, people from economics actually look at like you know what is the social costs or uh, social benefits of you know this access and all that anthropologists for example may study the culture which prevents them from doing it uh, environmentalists for example may look at the uh, different aspect of the inequities because for example like both developed countries and the developing countries are the biggest countries for climate change and global warming now an environmentalist will say like you know why what is why is it that you know like in developing countries this phenomenon is happening right but the bottom line the i want to emphasize it is that it is the same problem that is being the phenomenon is the same the problem is the same you know but approaches taken by different uh, disciplines di different people are completely different okay. now why can't we for example instead of studying an industry problem like a uh, let's say a new manufacturing system purely from an engineering point of view and then say this is the this is going to increase productivity why not we create an interdisciplinary research which looks at i have this new production system at the same time like will it have any type of impact on the emotional well-being of the employees who are working right will it have any type of psychological uh, effect on them or uh, will it foster you know uh, a quote was mentioned that if you want to run fast, you um, go be alone. But if you want to go far, go with a team. And here is a quote that you can really look at in the industry. Like, let's say the engineering problem that you try to solve, say like, you know, that what type of, you know, does it really create the potential for teamwork and people to go far? So the questions are multitude of questions that you can uh, get. But the reality is uh, what I want to again emphasize is that have an open mind and look at an interdisciplinary approach to the research that you're doing, right? I, whether it be like, you know, I mean, we talked about MSMEs funding, what are, see, if, why, what are the obstacles that they face? So this is something you can really think about. The, the reason is the problem is the same, but both the causes and effect are multifaceted. Okay, these are something that we have to really look at. Uh, <clears throat> So there is no such theory as a good theory unless it can really solve a real world problem, societal problem for us. So try to keep that in mind, you know, whether it's in Atmanirvar Bharat or whatever be your field of expertise, specialization, um, keep the thing. So finally, I mean, to going to the next topic, okay, that we talked about, which I want to again summarize or reemphasize again is that uh, when we talk about Atmanirvar Bharat as a uh, vision, right, let's also keep this in mind. When is it beneficial to us? Okay. In what areas does it benefit? What sectors they are beneficial? Which sectors it may not really work, may not be beneficial to us? Or should it be only focused on our national interest? Or should it be, should it be really focused on the helping the people around the world? I mean, as I mentioned, that there is we have reached too far now to walk away from the interdependent world. It's not possible. So the best thing is, uh, how do we work within that, or even how do we even prioritize? Right? Do we put the national interest first, or do, do we put the world and global interest first, or is there something that we can say, like you know, simultaneously we can pursue both the goals? Right? You know, how can we make? Um, us self-reliant and at the same time like you know, help the rest of the world right in whatever way we can industries also i can tell you face the same problem okay, that we are facing as academics only thing is like you know we don't sit across the table to with the industry to see what they actually have uh, sometimes like you know they also have the tendency if i'm going to really share something with these academics this you know, this is intellectual property right, or maybe something is uh, uh, like on the flight, you know, I don't want to mention that part. industrialist is from Ludhiana, I mean, sorry, from Jalandhar. Uh, Sunday, we were flying together, we had a lengthy one-hour conversation from Delhi to here. 
And I told him that I'm coming to NIT. He said, like, come, let's have lunch together. I said, you know, this morning I messaged him that um, I'm here at 12.30 or 1.30. I should be done. Can we meet? He said, no, I'm in Chandigarh, unfortunately. That's fine. Then he said, you know, we are negotiating a an mergers and acquisition with, you know, that we are doing an M&A with a joint venture with one of the uh, U.S. companies, 15 days. So I asked him, what is it about? He said, no, I cannot tell you. I cannot disclose it. Okay. I said, no, that's fine. It's a trade secret. Okay. But my what also it crossed my mind is that, you know, if there are, uh, if you're an industrialist, you ought to have the joint venture or whatever it is. You have to tell somebody. Your lawyers are involved. Your chartered accountants are involved. Your banks are involved. You know, you tell them, I need money for this. Okay. <coughs> your investors are involved. Why only hold it from academia and then say that, you know, there's something. Okay. It is possible, you know, out of, I would like to believe or I tend to believe that, you know, 99.99% of the people are honest. You always have one crook out of 10,000. You know, do we really make uh, certain things for the one person out of 10,000? Or do we really focus on the 9,999 people who are fairly honest, you know, train the rules or even have healthy discussion? So industries face the same problem. You know, they have the same issues like uh, lack of skilled workers, uh, sustainable development goals, climate issues, you know, how to innovate, right? So here is an uh, option where uh, my request to you know, the CIA and everybody else is like, be a little bit more honest and be more transparent with us. You know, we can help you. We are not going to steal your uh, property. Uh, maybe like, you know, we are able to solve some of the problems that you think may not be solvable, right? So that is something you always have to keep in uh, mind. Okay? So education and research as well as uh, academic partnership are uh, quite uh, critical. Uh, finally, I am sure that in the next two days, uh, all the brightest mind uh, from this country, like who are here to share what you know and what you uh, have to learn, will be able to have a free and transparent and open exchange of ideas. And um, it ultimately, it will be beneficial to you as well as to the students that we are teaching. And of course, to the industry. Once again, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. It was indeed a pleasure for me to come and address this. Uh, thank you, Arif, and see you next time. Hello everyone, so before I starting our uh, regarding of this conference, I have observed that uh, one of our eminent speaker, even that a uh, lot of time he has devoted. So most of uh, our audience, I have seen that uh, they have not silent your phone, our phone, even that uh, they are searching of something, even that uh, you have not find out of uh, anything in a new in a your phone just on, on a information so i think that uh, we should listen of uh, this eminent person so i think that as uh, some of the people is sitting in uh, this audience so they are missing so just i want to say those who are interested just sit here those who are not interested not sit here because i have seen that uh, the eminent person is there but uh, we are not listening because what they have discussed, this is not written in anywhere. Just after a lot of experience, 
so what thought he has given in a audience this is a for a opportunity for us so first we listen carefully because the i have seen that a lot of things he has discussed so before of is starting so sorry to say that i need this good conference and to begin so good afternoon to everyone i would like to express my gratitude to icssr and near apex national nodal council for promoting and funding social science and research for a sponsoring of a, this conference i am thankful to sri subhash chandra ralhan chairman bog our nit jalandhar for a sparing time but uh, he is busy due to of us some busy schedule so he is not present on a online so i am thankful to dignitary spend sri s k rai md hero cycle limited and our keynote speaker dr n ram murthy director iim amritsar and guest of honor professor b s sai director iim jammu mr amit thapar chairman cii punjab and president of uh, ganga acrobot for uh, gracing the occasion and our dean and head of department and our faculty and student and staff and some of a media person so our worthy speaker have talk a length of about atmanirbhar bharat in fact india has been dealing with a health and economic crisis in the form of a covid 19 pandemic for a past two year even that our speaker has discuss lot of things in a regarding of a contribution of a, our country it has a devastating effect on a practical every sector of a economy as a result in a order to make india resilient and self reliance the notion of a atmanirbhar bharat was highlighted by honorable prime minister narendra modi ji he further outlined the five pillar before <coughs> mr rai he had discussed lot of things regarding of a atmanirbhar that five pillar of atmanirbhar economy infrastructure system and vibrant demography and demand in this direction the government also took several bold reforms such as a supply chain reform for agriculture regional tax system simple and clear laws and capable human resources and strong financial system the approach of atmanirbhar bharat is based on the basic concept instead of allowing the others to decide our future we as a nation should focus on a building strong capability and take a control of our destiny in our hands our success in a doing so will determine future in terms of our engagement and our standing with the world alignment with the goal of atmanirbhar bharat the present national conference aimed as a exploring the prospects and challenge of a different sectors of a indian economy i am sure that a present conference will provide a platform to both of a academia and industry and thus help in exploring new strategies that will help the country reviving economy and contribute to to the healthy development of the overall society it is up to us to exploit this sentiment of a additional engines of a growth by creating better condition of for a production thus the present conference requires special attention in this situation so in the end i would gratitude dr sonia chawla hod humanity and management and her team for organizing this conference and also thanks all the delegates for participating in this conference thank you very much for uh, your kind attention and i hope that the uh, conference will be a great success thank you everyone thank you sir thank you for your insightful deliberations now i would request dr sham kiran kaur organizing secretary to extend a vote of thanks to the respected conference chairs 
who have enlightened us with their grace, presence, and deliberations. Honorable Director, Professor Vinod Kumar Kanojia, Worthy Registrar, Professor Ajay Bansal, Respected Shri SK Rai, Managing Director, Hero Cycles Limited, Mr. Amit Thapar, Chairman, CII Punjab, Professor B.S. Sahai, Director, I am Amritsar, uh, Professor R. Nagarajan, I am, sorry, Professor B.S. Sahai, Director, I am Jammu, and Professor A. R. Nagarajan, Director, I am Amritsar, Dean Research and Consultancy, Professor Chakravarti, Dr. Chavla, Head Department of Humanities and Management and Chairman BSRI, Think Secretaries of the Conference, Dr. SGS Bedi, Dr. Jabinder Singh, Dr. Gyan Prakash, Dr. Sukhvinder Kaur, Dr. Gaur members and delegates uh, from industry and academia. Good afternoon to all. Indeed, it's a matter of honor for me to propose a vote of thanks on the behalf of Department of Humanities and Management at the inaugural ceremony of uh, ICSSR sponsored national conference on Atam Nirbhar Bharat, building a self-reliant India, prospects and challenges ahead. I would like to thank our honorable director for his guidance, assistance, and motivation that ensured smooth functioning of this event. Thank you very much, sir. And I also express our sincere appreciation to Shri S.K. Rai, Managing Director, Hero Cycles Limited. Sir has aptly stated that if our country wants to survive, then you should be competitive and even focus on innovations. Thank you, sir. And uh, Mr. Thapur, we are also extremely thankful to you uh, for delivering a motivating uh, discourse. And even uh, we appreciate and we are thankful to Professor B.S. Sahai, Director I am Jammu, for his well-informed address, emphasizing on entrepreneurship, collaboration of industry and academia. And even he stated that uh, Atam Nirbharta is required to regain the lost glory of India. And I also pray my gratitude uh, to Professor R. Nagaranjan, Director I am Amritsar, for delivering a truly motivating inaugural address by citing contemporary issues and social objectives, equal opportunities, and emphasizing on the nature of research. Thank you very much, sir. I also pay my gratitude to dignitaries from industries, Mr. Huck, President Jalandhar Management Association, Mr. Ashwini Kumar, Director of Victor uh, Forgings, and we are grateful to Mr. Barnett from Birmingham University, Mr. Ajay Sena for this event with your presence. Thank you, sir. And uh, I'm also thankful to our registrar deans, faculty members, uh, session chairs for joining us at this inaugural ceremony. We are extremely thankful to Indian Council of Social Science Research for sponsoring this event. And thanks to media to provide coverage to our conference for print as well as digital media. I wish to thank Dr. Sonia Chavla, Chairperson, for the efforts and dedication she has put in this endeavor. I acknowledge the contribution of organizing secretaries, Dr. S.G.S. Bedi, Dr. Jagbinder Singh, Dr. Gyan Prakash, Dr. Sukhbinder Kaur, and Dr. Gossia for their active assistance in organizing this event and dedicated, meticulous, enthusiastic student coordinators of various teams of BSRI have worked extremely hard. I congratulate for a great job and a big round of applause for our motivated, dedicated students. I'm also
delegates who have gathered here across India from different parts of our nation. I'm sure that this conference would definitely explore prospects and challenges of different sectors of Indian economy aligned with the goal of Atam Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan. Thank you very much and best wishes to all. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, now I request everyone to rise up their seats for national anthem. Uh, now, there is a small announcement. Uh, can you proceed towards the Snackers, the venue for the delicious lunch break? Venue is just opposite to the management and science block. Uh, after the lunch break, technical sessions will sh start sharp at 2 p.m., Deta uh, details of which have already been shared with you. Uh, still, for your convenience, I retreat. Uh, it is at the venue, same uh, management and science block. Second floor, room numbers are 201, 209, and 226. Still, if, uh, in any case you seek any information, you can contact at the registration desk. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Uh, one more small announcement. Uh, there will be a, a session for a group photo outside this venue. 